everyone, it's Clint Salter, your host for Dance Teachers Unite for 2015, and I'm excited. I'm always excited, but I'm very excited today to be bringing you a fantastic guest. Now, as studio owners, I know that you're always looking for ways to stand out. How do you differentiate yourself from the studio that's up the road, down the corridor, above you? Well, I've got someone that is going to help you do that today and do it through media exposure. She's the guru when it comes to how to get media exposure for your studio. So I'd love to welcome our guest today, Susan Harrow. Hi, Susan. How are you? Hi. So nice to be here. It's so funny that you called me a guru. I would never call myself a guru and I hope no one would call themselves a guru or a master because... <laughs> You want other people to call you that, but you never want to say that yourself. Like if somebody says, oh, I'm enlightened, then I don't believe they are, right? I love that. Well, that's a, that's a first great tip before we've even started. Yeah. You can give yourself a moniker because a lot of people like that. Um, like one of my clients who does mesotherapy, which is um, it's, um, it's a natural way to enhance your uh, beautiful self. So it's little tiny print pricks of... Um, uh, homeopathy vitamins and minerals underneath the skin so he calls himself or we named him the top or the foremost expert in mesotherapy in the United States because he brought it over from France right mm -hmm. so you can say I'm the top this or I'm the top that if you are or nationally recognized or some other some some other something that's really shows that you're unique in your industry like um, who was the actor that I heard say, I'm the only one who shot Robert De Niro dead? And the interviewer said, but he's been shot before. He said, yes, but not shot dead. And that was in the actor's bio. Wow. I love that. I, yeah. think that's, I think that's a fantastic example. Now, before we jump in, Susan, can you let our studio owners know in 60 seconds a little bit about what you do and also what's your big mission in the world? Yeah, so I can sum up that in a sentence, which is speak your mind, stand your ground, sing your song. So I would say my, I have sort of two missions, you know, one is that everyone speak their truth. And with that, what I mean by that is not that you tell all, but that you tell the most important things in the appropriate way to the appropriate Person, meaning that you really select what is very specific, uh, uh, specifically of interest to your audience only. And that's the only thing that you say in all circumstances. So what I would call my big vision, and I'm not sure if you're asking about this because you read it in my bio, um, the wild bio part, but my big vision is to bring communication skills and Aikido to schools all over the world. Because I love that combination. Aikido is a Japanese martial art of love and harmony, but it's still very Budo. It's still very um, martial, as we say. So that's, in Aikido, you move always, you never go against the person's energy. You always move in the flow of that person's energy. And you move that person with their energy. And you use their energy to flow them. It's the same in media when you're having an interview, you never try to block the person or try to change them because the only person you can change yourself is you go with the flow and you redirect the energy. So in Aikido, for example, you're not just going in that same person's direction. You're using their energy and then moving them into the direction that you want. It's the exact same thing in media. So mm -hmm. I want to bring um, communication skills, meaning people being able to speak and facially, you know, body, speak their mind in a way that that is true to themselves in any circumstance so everybody can speak up for themselves and then the body part of that is learning the aikido which is also how to get along with people and i think if we could do that um that we actually could really have not peace in the world because i don't really think we can ever have peace because of our human nature i mean this is something i've been thinking a lot about lately it's like i'd love to say oh i want peace in the world but I just don't think it's realistic seeing little boys. I'm sorry, growing up and seeing them at like age three, like kicking trees and beating each other. I just think it's in our nature mm -hmm. to want to dominate each other or, you know, all of these other things. So I think that's unrealistic to say peace in the world. But I think we can live more harmoniously um, if we speak um, what's true for ourselves and act in such a way that it's in sync with everything you do say, are and think is in alignment. And then you move through the world that way. 
So mm. I, th- I would say that's my big vision. I love, I love yeah. that. And I love the synergies there between those two things that can often seem so separate. Um, you know, like I mentioned in the intro, a lot of our dance studio owners, when it comes to getting media exposure, that they get a bit stuck. They're like, okay, so I, you know, I'd love to get a story placed in a local newspaper or an online resource, or I'd love to be on our local radio station or local television network. I mean, what are some of those mistakes that you see being made up front for people that want to get some type of media exposure? Yeah, I think there are three biggest mistakes. Number one is talking all about yourself um, because the media is all about an angle and what's good for their audience. That would be number one. Number two would be to send out a press release before your media trained or before you've actually practiced your sound bites. Um, so people typically do things back ass words. They get so excited, they send something to the media, and then they have their O-S-H, you know what, moment when the media calls. Now what am I going to say? And then they miss their opportunity for getting an interview and actually saying something that's meaningful to the audience. And then number three, they don't think about um, what actually result they want from that media interview because that's where the sound bites follow. What you say and how you do and how you position yourself in a TV segment or a radio show or in print or on the internet is designed to grow your business in the direction you want. So if you want people to come into your dance studio and take your classes, because that's what, what people want, right? Yeah, they, they want do. want to grow their, their business and then maybe have people take their new offerings or, or maybe attract teachers, whatever that mission is, or train other teachers, whatever that mission is, kind of go back three steps and ask yourself these three questions first, And then I'll get to what you say to the media. Number one, how do I want to serve in the bigger sense of the word in the, in the world? Um, That's number one. Number two, what do I want for myself? And I'm talking about spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, both personally and professionally. And then number three is what do I want my audience to do? Do I want them to call up? Do I want them to walk into the studio? Do I want them to get to my website? Do I want to offer them something so they get onto my list so I can contact them? Because realize that in today's um, environment, even if you're working locally, that sometimes it takes 10 touches for somebody to make a decision. So they may need to see you on television, read about you in the local newspaper, see, hear you on radio, and then maybe, you know, and then, um, you know, walk by your studio um, and maybe get referred by a friend before they'll actually come in and, and do it. So then let's talk about like, so that's before you ever um, talk to the media. Yeah. So can uh, I just, yeah. just something yeah, that jump you, in because I, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> there's something that has come up uh, frequently, frequently in these interviews is the fact that you've got to get so clear on your objective. What is your goal? And this happens with, I think, social media as well. People just are like, I've got to post something on Facebook or I've got to do this for the sake of doing it because everyone else is doing it. So I love that you've also brought it back to, hey, before you jump in, what is it that you want? What is it that you want to achieve? Yeah, you know, I've got a really fabulous client right now and um, she's about to have a book come out. And one of the things I went through her book and I put in all of the stories, the success stories and the kinds of, for the kinds of clients that she wants. So you as dance studios, you probably want a particular kind of student too. Somebody who's going to stick with it, who's going to go from level one to level 10 to maybe take different classes. So you really want to think about attracting your ideal student too and, or teacher, whoever, you know, whatever else your objective is and then um so for her we did that first with her book putting in the kinds of client stories that she wanted so you as your as a dance studio want to start collecting the kind of success stories or the interesting stories or the moving stories of people who've been through your studio and then the second thing that we did for her is like okay well well, what do you want to how do you want to grow your business and she said oh i don't really my coaching practice is full so i really want to do more group coaching and move people into my online courses. However, her website wasn't set up for that. So you really, in this day and age, need to say, is my website also set up to close people so that they're almost closed by the time they pick up the phone or they, um, they sign up online? 
So you want to have a process on your website to do that before you go out to the media, because otherwise it's wasted. So you want to look at your website process. If you're driving people there, if you're driving people to the phone, you also want to look at that process. So what we're doing for, with her, and, and this is one of the things that I think maybe your dance studio people think too, is like, she, I said, well, she had all of these products, but they were in all of different, you know, she had videos and audios and they were all over the place. And most of them didn't have any opt-ins to gather the person's name. And I said, well, what is the purpose of this? I asked her for each one. She goes, I never thought about that. I just had a creative moment and I just did it. And I go, okay. I go, so you didn't collect any names and you never have a way to get in touch with those people. And you didn't sort of, um, you didn't also, um, rate it, meaning, I forgot the word, but um, you want to look at like, how popular is it? What's what's catching the person's audience? No, she didn't have any kind of, um, any way to measure what was working or what wasn't. Now, she's looking at, oh my God, now I can see what's really sticking. So I know how to create a particular class for this. And that goes for your dance studio too. So hey, if everybody loves hip hop, you might want to offer different varieties of hip hop if they're loving jazz or Zumba or whatever, right? You know, or you, you yeah. might have a little different way to do Zumba. That's, you know, you want to pay attention to what people are wanting as well as opening up the doors. So you want to set, that's a long way of saying you want to get all of that set up before, um, before you contact the media. And then, so what we're doing with her is we're setting up each funnel to move people toward their interests. Because in your dance studio, the person who's taking hip hop might not be interested in African dance or may not be interested in Zumba or um, Flamingo or um, what's the, what is it called? Um, what's the form, like tango, what's the formal dance stuff? You know, yeah. that, so everybody has different interests. So you want to think about funneling them toward their interests. Um, so when you're thinking also about the media and you've got a broad array of classes, you might want to just try to offer it all, but really the narrower the offer, the better. So even if you do a press release around tango, a press release around hip hop, a press release. So for example, if you had like a lot of older people in the community really loving like the, um, what's the word where they, where they have those competitions for the formal dancing. It's, 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 it's um, going out of my mind. You know what I'm talking about? Um. Even, do you, do you mean... There's competitions that they have all over the world for formal dancing. Um, oh, I, when I, I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Anyway, it's a different audience is what I'm saying. So you might write a press release targeted to older people who want to learn how to do tango, ballroom dancing. Thank you. Ballroom oh, dancing. Oh, okay. You might want to do ballroom dancing. <laughs> and then, <laughs> right? And then, um, so by the way, if that ever happens to you in a media interview, just go on, right? Or ask the interviewer for help. Yeah. If so, they can help you. I wasn't able to help you in that instance. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I eventually, yeah, I came back to it. So, um, you know, versus you're targeting younger kids or teenagers if you're offering hip hop. So that's going to be a different offering to the media. So you want to keep it narrow and specific. And... Okay, so what did you originally ask me? What are some of the mistakes? So mm -hmm. the, one of the biggest mistakes is then making it too broad or making it about you versus one thing that you can do since you're local is um, capture the stories of really great success stories like the super shy kid who comes in who suddenly discovers that this is like so natural. And so beautiful, but they can't really, maybe you're, the kid can't talk, you know, it's not verbal, but expressing with their body is really something that comes naturally to the shy kid and then it brings them out in school. So think about the stories within your community, because one really great way to get publicity locally is to not shine the light on you, but to shine the light on people in the community, in your courses, in your classes. So that's something that's like a real winner like local hero or local you know child comes out of there or older person whatever it is yeah i think that's great and as well so many dance studio studios have children have students that go on to be in ballet companies oh, or they wow. get roles in musicals 
um, or they get, you know, big contracts overseas, dancing with international Good companies. Lord. Yeah. I mean, those, are, those would be fabulous stories to tell. Yeah. And, and particularly if there's any kind of trend to that, like if there were, you know, you know, if you had five of them who got like some other kind of, um, you know, big deal like that, absolutely highlight them all five in the press release and, you know, tell the one line story of each one. This one went to China, this one's into the Broadway play, you know, this one, whatever. You got the yeah. idea. Now, what I want to ask you, because what comes up a lot is, you know, and members in our program and the other dance studios that are watching will say, you know, I've pitched an idea to the media and they've put me onto their advertising department. Oh. So what, what's been the disconnect there or ha has something happened? How have they kind of gone, this is advertising, this isn't editorial, this isn't something that our, our audience is going to get um, value from or they're not going to eat it up straight away. Is that, is that what happens? What happens there? No, it's not about, I, I wouldn't take it as a comment on your value. I would take it a comment on what's happening in the culture today. And even as I was a publicist, I was so annoyed when people did that to me because obviously, um, I mean, maybe not obviously, but, but if someone has invested in a PR campaign, they may not have also a budget for advertising. It's a different, it's a different medium. And the advantage of publicity over advertising is that you have the um, approval because you pass through the journalist or, or producers um, a screen that people automatically then assume that you are noteworthy or that you're famous or that you're worth listening to. In advertising, you don't have that. So I know, and it is annoying to be passed to the advertising department. So if you don't have an advertising budget and you are looking for publicity, you politely decline and say, I'm, uh, if you could pass me instead to the appropriate journalist or um, the person who might do a story like mine, I'd appreciate that. And just tell them that you don't have a budget for advertising. I mean, just be as simple as that. They don't want to pursue people who don't have a budget. I mean, end of story. Yeah, yeah. yeah end of story. And say, you can even say I'm doing the publicity myself. So if you don't have a publicity budget, you know, you're, you're doing it yourself. So, um, yeah, so that's just something that's, and, and there's a, a big blur in the culture today now for advertorials. I mean, even in the New York Times, right? Like, we don't always know what sponsored copy is, sponsored copy. Yeah. So it's a whole move in the industry to the online world, too, that this has become, the advertorials have become much more blurred. Yeah. And I think even with, you know, what we've seen over the last, you know, 12 to 18 months is this rise of agencies. I used to be a, an agent for TV and media personalities, people that were on, you know, TV and public books but what we see now is bloggers and blog platforms they have their own agents now that people go through to get sponsored posts so you can reach out to an online resource and say I've got this great story you know um, here's how I can add value to your audience and they will say sure we can do that but it's a sponsored post and it's going to cost you X amount of money yes yeah, so that exists too. And there are agencies that you can go through. The advantage to you is if you want to be the one who picks, who gets the content picked. So, you know, oftentimes um, it works the other way around where people like your content. You are not advertising anything. You've got a great informational kind of something that people want. So they're actually paying you instead of you paying them. Yeah, so yeah. What uh, I guess another challenge that studio owners are facing is like, how do I get the contact details of these people? Or how do I know who's the right person to speak to, you know, the right journalist to speak to that yeah. look after that department? So whether you're going on a health angle or, or whatever it might be, how do we know who to send our media release to so it's not sitting in the wrong person's inbox? Yeah. So there's a number of quick ways to do it. Um, you know, in, because your people are all over the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. So online there, you can, um, you can find them on Twitter, number one. And, and then we'll talk about strategy of approaching them if you like. So you can find them on Twitter. You can also find them in LinkedIn. There's plenty of people in LinkedIn that you can get at, you, you may not be able to contact them directly via email, but you can contact them via um, LinkedIn. And then the other thing is quite simply now, like local TV and radio and 
newspapers have online, they're on, they list a lot of times their contacts online. So it's really not that hard to find anybody. Plus you can, you can Google it and you'd be surprised at how quickly you can come up with contacts just in Google. And the advantage of also Googling them is that you know about them personally and you, you can research their beat or what they write about or what they talk about before you approach them, which is what I would highly recommend. Mm, I love that. And it's so true. I mean, and if you're, if you've got a bit of private investigator in you as well, you can kind yeah. of dig or into you're a little nosy. Yeah. <laughs> you're that. curious. That. You're curious. I like that better. Curious. curious. Yeah. And you know, I tried this out just the other day too, not for any, and cause I'm not a publicist anymore. I'm a media trainer and, and I do the strategy, the pre publicity strategy for people before like, like what we were talking about, like getting your website set up and getting all of that. But I just did this for fun because, because I wanted to, for no other reason than this, there was, um, uh, an interviewer that su was substituting for a show that I listen to regularly here in the U.S. And I really liked her. I really loved, loved her style. I love him too, but he's a little abrasive. And so, <laughs> and, I, and he's fun. So I like it, but I just loved her style. So I, um, I looked her up on the internet and then I saw, you know, follow me on Twitter. So I did. And then, you know, two minutes later, she followed me back. And I just wrote, you know, I just love your interviewing style and I hope to see more of you. I hope you substitute more often on the show and other shows. And, and that's all I said. I just, it was just a compliment. It was really sincere. And I just did it. Boom. Uh, you know, spur, spur of the moment. And she immediately wrote back. So there we've established a little rapport. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not asking anything of her. I re that really was sincere. So if you look to people and you, um, look to try to find the people who you really would like to interview you, who you do admire, you know, um, both locally and nationally. Cause one thing too about being, um, I know your studios are all local, but sometimes like I'm, I'm here in the San Francisco Bay area. Ah, San I'm flying to San Fran in two days. Oh my God, get out of here. No way. <laughs> out of here yeah that's so fun mm. yeah it's a great city i lived there for 20 years now i'm in in uh, marin so um when i was a publicist then it was very provincial meaning i had to get national publicity for my clients before the local media would take interest in me and that i don't know if that's true for wherever you are but sometimes having had a more prestigious publication or show have interest in you then gives the local media publicity, I mean, permission to do some publicity. So yeah. don't shy away from doing some national publicity if you've got a great story like these success stories that, that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to a national radio show or since you're a visual medium, you know, a, a TV show. Yes, get practice locally first, you know, particularly for TV, but, um, but you know, and even for your industry, a video clip you know, would be something to absolutely link to, to, to whatever you're talking about. Yeah, definitely. I think the national um, publicity is uh, very beneficial. We had one of our members about two weeks ago have a story published in a big um, online publication about one of her male dancers that oh. ended up going viral. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, it was fantastic for her. I mean, she's got this little small, you know, uh, in a small area, not a small studio, but in a small area. But what I find is also great about that is it's great to then show that to your existing students and parents. They oh, love yeah. seeing that and they share that you know, on Facebook, you know, they shared the, the short clip on Instagram. Um, that is fantastic as well. So I, I want people to make sure they're not just thinking about, you know, bringing the new people in, but, but nurturing and keeping their existing students and parents excited. You know, that's such a great point because our biggest fans are the people who already love us, you know, so don't ignore them for the new shiny thing that like that was sort of like the whole premise of toy story right yeah like yeah, yeah. you know with buzz buzz lightly buzz buzz, buzz light yeah yeah buzz light right yeah. you yeah. know and that was so poignant you know i loved that but um anyway you know and my speedy worked at, at pixar on that but anyway you know 
that is so true to nurture the students that you have because first of all, they're growing with you for the years and they're also your biggest fans. That's sort of the best publicity ever is to have people love you and your studio and refer other people to it. I mean, to me, that's like, that's, that's sometimes more gratifying than even the bigger numbers for yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I loved what you touched on with your example of reaching out to that that person that was substituting, and you just sent them, uh, you know, a little tweet. I mean, for me, that's the beginning of of a relationship. And I find that a lot of studio owners, when they're they're pitching for maybe a story to their local press, that they kind of you know go in bam all all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's a good idea to identify? you know, quite early on, who are these people that would potentially pick up a story from me and start building that relationship first before you want to take them home and marry them? You know, it's kind of that, uh, kind of yeah, that analogy. It's the, it's the kiss or at least the whole handhold first. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I want to say yes. And it's also not, it's not always necessary. It's really wonderful if um, you want to start to cultivate that first. And, and if you do, some of the ways to do that are follow the stories and compliment them on a particular aspect of the story that you like, not just great story, but something very specific. And yeah. number two would be, um, you know, a great way to, to jump. Number two, I think would be to um, offer them help in some way if you can like if you have an idea of someone else that you can offer that would be a great idea for a story like not always thinking about your own story first but someone else that might be super great and then the other thing is you know so you're following their beat and you're really understanding what they're writing about and then the third thing would then be um you could do a twist on a story that they've already done or even take the opposite point of view, say, you know, I love this story, but I totally disagree with you or I totally agree with you and here's this other aspect of it or a hidden aspect of it that, mm. that perhaps you'd like to cover, you know. So that's like a little tease to get them interested. That's that you can easily do on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, but you said you don't you don't need to because I don't want to put I don't want people to think oh I've got to nurture this relationship for six months. You know, is it if the story is great, they're going to pick it up? Absolutely. So don't think you have to that do that, and you can also nurture it after. You know, you don't have to. You can nurture it before, during, and after. It doesn't it doesn't matter the order. It's whatever is appropriate for the moment. Like you might love, um, you know, you might love a host in a show. And you might not be ready for it. So that would be a perfect person to start to nurture now. You know, yeah. like, oh my God, I'm too scared to get on that show right now. But start to nurture that relationship and the ones that are maybe less scary and more immediate. Go ahead. And yeah, awesome. Now, you mentioned before about the strategy of how do we, um, you know, how do we start the conversation if we've got a story to tell? I mean, what are some of your tips around standing out from everyone else that's sending media releases. Yeah, well, you're a great example of that because I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for your invitation, your pitch, right? So what you did, right, was number one, you did know something about me and you said a sincere compliment, you know? And then you talked about why, um, why I would be a good fit for your people. And you also made it super easy because they said you were going to do all the work and I didn't have to do anything. So just to, turn up. You had to turn up. <laughs> yeah, I just had to turn up. Yeah. You know, you wrote the questions. Like oftentimes, you know, in media, I recommend that you write the questions, even if you're on a blog show or something. But, you know, to me, I mean, it's, it's time consuming. So if you were going to make me write my questions, I probably wouldn't come on. Yeah. You know, I love the, but I love the spontaneous too, you know, so I love, I love the fact that I, I, you know, I'm not right. You're writing the questions and we can even go off script. So, you know, these, those are the things that you did really right. And then because I didn't answer you right away because <laughs> you were persistent and you did, were persistent with the same thing. You sent a different email with another enticement. I think you explained things a little bit more, so you gave me even more incentive 
to say yes by by showing that you know I was going to be before an audience that I had never been before. You know that were eager for me. You know, and I and they are and they and are they, and you know and you are all people who I don't know yet. Like it's not in my sphere either. And I thought, wow. I said, I love dance, you know, I, you know, and I, and, you know, I love sports and I love dance and I, and I think it would be a good fit. And, but it was because of you, your personality, and because you were so nice and you were so lively and you were so lovely, you know, all of those kinds of things. Not, not that everybody has to be lively and lovely. That's not it. Be your own personality, but your personality is kind of, irresistible and hard to say no to. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, glad. I'm glad to hear that. You know what I mean? So that's, um, and you, you probably would have followed up with me again, right? If I hadn't said, if I hadn't responded, you might've okay. tried something else. Yeah. yeah so, um, so don't take no for an answer. Take no, take that it's no perhaps for that idea. You know, when you pitch something, it might not be the right idea, it might not be the right time, it might not be the right person. So don't assume that it's a crappy idea. Think about, okay, if that one didn't take, what else can I suggest that might be a better fit? That's the way I'm thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So, it, it, you know, it really is about being unique, but more importantly, I think relevant and personal in the approach. Yeah, and so what you said to how to stand out, you have to, in the media, you have to have a um, an outstanding subject line if you're pitching the media. It should be immediately understandable, and it should be, um, you know, something that they absolutely can't resist, mm. you know, because they get hundreds of these every day, and that's really literally, I'm not exaggerating by that. A typical journalist may get um, 300 to 500 emails a day. So imagine scanning those. Yeah. yeah. And you just go, you just kind of would be scrolling down the subject lines. Yeah. Now talking about subject line, should we have press release in the subject line? No. Should we just have no, you had your story? You would have the pitch, which is, um, you know, which might be something like, um, I'm just trying to think of, of some some kind of dance thing that's not, um, you know, usual. You might have something, you could do something that's like a trend, like the newest trend in dance is this, and it's surprising, you know, unathletic people can do it. So you want to have something that's like unusual or interesting, or you want to have an unusual statistic, something that's, um, shocking, like, you know, I mean, I don't know if this is true, but like, you know, 50% of all, you know, Zumba dancers never thought that they could, um, you know, had never, had never done anything athletic before. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so the trend might be, so that might be, mm, that might be part of your hook, but also then within the, within the press release or within the pitch, which may just be like a paragraph, you might put a statistic about like how Americans are, you know, eating more and weighing, e eating more and weighing more and exercising less and why Zumba is the perfect exercise for the couch potato because blah, 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 blah. And yep. this will shift, you know, Americans diabetic problem or weight problem or whatever. So, you know, connecting it to something national and with a statistic mm. is also really super helpful. I, I love that as well. And there's things around, you know, people feel like they've got less time in their day as well. So it might be like your 30 minute dance class that burns X amount of calories that exactly. they can do in their lunch break or what, whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. You know? I love that. I think that that's, I think that that's really good. Just getting people to think as well, studio owners to think about the copy that they're using in their subject lines um, yeah. so it is so important and so when we send that email this is this is tactical but these are things questions that I get asked all the time you know should our press release be an attachment you know should no. it be the body of the email no no attachments uh, journalists won't uh, open an attachment or a picture that's not invited so it needs to be you put links in there so you can put links to videos links to your social media and you should you know, yeah. put 
in there. You can embed, if you know how to do it, you can embed a picture, but it can't show up as a JPEG. It can't show up as an attached file. Yeah. So very short. Your first email should probably be really short. That'd be the subject line, um, a couple of lines about what your idea is, and then a little bit about you, like why you're the person to be featured in this story. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the kinds of things that are important. And then they are going to check you out on social media and check out your website. So be sure to put in all of that information because they need to make sure you're credible. Yeah. And make sure that, you know, and we've, we've spoken on this on Dance Teachers Unite, this online event about how to have a great website, how to look after your social media accounts. So make sure everyone, make sure you watch all of those videos because that's going to help you with this, this advice that Susan's yeah. giving you today. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's fantastic because, because they really, they really do check out your whole um, social media profiles. Absolutely. Yep. And the sum and of all of that is going to be who they think you are. That's why it's so important not to just put something up on Instagram that you're going to be uh, ashamed of later that you can't get down, you know? Yes. Yes. I mean, be very careful. You know, you know, things live forever on the web, right? You can get them in time machine later on. So once you put it up there. Once it's there, it's there. Even if you press the delete button, it's, that's right. it's somewhere. It's somewhere there. <laughs> yeah. So don't forget that. No, yeah, it's so not. People take it that really casually, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be in, in this day and age. Yeah. yeah. Susan, um, a lot of people, um, you know, will pitch ideas around different seasons. So it could be Valentine's Day. I was working with a Latin, a Latin based studio and we did a lot of stuff with them around, you know, single. Yeah. And, and Valentine's Day, for those people that want to find love, that was a perfect theme. You know, there might be things around Christmas or New Year or summer's coming, how to get, you know, that beach body through dance classes. I mean, how much lead time should we be giving ourselves for those kind of, you know, themed times in the year? Yeah, so the holiday, so there's the holiday gift guides, which is actually guides. So if you are interested in pursuing national media, I highly suggest that you get the editorial calendars for those because those are the most popular, most popular issues. And the, and the editorial calendars are what they give to advertisers, but you can find most of them online. So you can download those ones that you're particularly interested in. The second thing is, oh, and by the way, I do have a free blog post on that, so you can get the, some editorial oh, calendar for free. Yeah, so just go to um, prsecrets.com forward slash articles and search for um, holiday gift guides, and you can get what you can get. Some oh, of those. thank you. Like, they're all collected in one, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, so you don't have to go out and do the hours of research. Exactly, exactly. Um, mostly American uh, things, so. That's but, fine. We've got, we've got lots of, you know, with our audience, over 50% of our audience is from the U.S., so. Okay, okay, super. So when you get that, you can see an editorial calendar. So for magazines, a typical lead time is three to six months. So you do need to plan it out. For newspapers, it's not going to be that long for wedding season one to get into your wedding dress, like you said, a beach ball body, but also get into your wedding dress. You know, that's also, you know, an interesting fun that. to get into shape, right? So you could pitch all the wedding magazines. Um, so three to six months lead time for magazines, not, I mean, obviously not true for online, mag the online version mm -hmm. could happen in a week or so, but realize that those are their most um, competitive um, issues or same with radio shows like I have one client who she does most of her interviews all year for on Valentine's Day because that's what her topic is she does like 200 interviews on the radio um, wow. every year that's most profitable for her right and I've got a client right now who has cookies and we've we've created pitches for all of the different holidays like you said there's a pitch for her Christmas cookies for the Valentine's Day cookies. So we've got pitches already set up to send to all of the magazines and everything now. So I would set your whole editor, if you can set your whole editorial calendar for the year for those special holidays. That was so going to be my question. Yeah, yeah, my question was, should we be, you know, should we have like our 12 month planner on the wall and kind of go, okay, Valentine's here, this is here and, and be, be um, comfortable in adapting it because it's going to change, but, yeah. but prepare for those 12 months. Yes, absolutely. Because you also need time to, um, if they don't accept your pitch to revise it or think of something else or think of a variety of, of things for that. And, and, um, 
you know, one of the most popular things for any of those kinds of holidays, whether it's Valentine's Day or Christmas, are roundups, which are, and most people think about, oh my God, I don't want to mention my competition, but a roundup can be similar. It doesn't have to be uh, dance studios. It can be things that are surrounding dance studios, like you might do a roundup of the best, um, the best stuff to get in shape, which would mean mm -hmm. uh, you recommend food, you recommend clothes, like the most comfortable or sexy dance clothes. Then you've got the dances to go with those foods and clothes. So this might be a way. Do, yeah. do you know what I'm following me with for a roundup? So yeah, I love that. A story around I around was... all of those different things, and you you have those recommended you just don't say any food you're like these snack bars are is what going to keep you going yeah i love the i i'm just thinking um is an idea around you know the, the top 10 things to keep your child active during the summer holidays you know yes. and you might have a dance camp coming up absolutely mm. absolutely yeah, that's a great idea. By the way, that's a great idea. Steal that. <laughs> take that, everyone. You can take my idea. Yeah. Yeah, but I and love how to keep your kids safe. I mean, that could be, you know, how to get your kid in shape and keep your kids safe because you don't want to, you know, if they're stung by a bee or, you know what I mean? Or Yeah, I love that. Safe and you sane during. Yeah, and you sane, exactly. Because the parents are like, the kids are at home and they're driving me insane. Right. Um, get them out of dance camp. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I love that. There you go, everyone. There's an awesome idea that you can take away. Just one. There's lots here. Um, that, that's really valuable. Uh, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about how public relations, how, how this media, pitching for media, how it's changed over the last few years. Because obviously with online, you know, there's been a lot of changes and the decline in newspapers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I think the biggest change is um, the shift to online media because it's so immediate and also um, it's so immediate it can, and it can also be disastrous. So the speed of it. So that's where you have to be more careful about what you're putting up online, I think. And even what, when you're pitching to the media, because things can go viral so fast. So I think that, that the, the greatest thing is that, um, you know, that you can get up and online and in a major publication, really literally overnight, you know, uh, in the online version. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and you can see how popular that is. So you can see how popular a topic is. So that's really super. Um, the other thing that's changed is that we don't use the phone very much anymore to contact journalists and producers. When we do use the phone, it's typically after you've been booked. So um, when I work with publicists who I media train their clients and create whole um, TV, national TV segments and local TV segments, um, they secure the booking and then we iron out. I create the TV segment and I iron out every single thing. So um, I iron out um, the props, what they're going to talk about, the questions. Um, I plan out the whole entire segment. That's a, the, the, that leads me to the second way that media has changed, which is um, um, even the major studios have less people, more skeleton crews. So the more you can do, so when I create those whole pitches for my clients or for people who've already been booked, most of the time they get accepted as is. There's very little tweaking because I've done that whole job of the producer and you can do the same thing. You know, you create the whole segment. You, you show what the B roll is going to be dancing, you know, the dancing B roll. What are the props? What are you wearing? What are you bringing? What are you bringing balls? Are you bringing bars, whatever that those elements are, you know, what are you going to say that's new and exciting? Um, why is it relevant for their audience? Why is it new and sexy? Those are the kinds of things. Then once you're booked, when you've done your pitch um, via email, once you're booked, that's when a producer calls and maybe starts and starts ironing out some of the details. I like this aspect of it. I don't like this aspect. Let's see if we can tweak it this way. You know, so it, there's a process that goes back and forth. And sometimes that can be quite lengthy. Mm. Um, going back and forth until everything's ironed out. And sometimes, like you and I were talking beforehand, sometimes 
everything is already planned and ready to go. And boom, it's changed at the last minute. Yeah. You know, I had a client who was on Oprah, who I media trained for Oprah, who was, um, had, when Oprah had her show, she had the entire uh, hour. So it was really super exciting, but it, the, they were filming for 14 hour days and she calls me up on a Saturday. Thank God I was there going like, oh my God, they just changed the angle. Can you help? So we like media train like on the spot for some new great sound bites that really focused on her products and her services that would serve her for the next 14 hours because they had shifted in the middle of shooting. Like, okay, we don't really like that angling move. We want to go. And that is not uncommon. Mm. And you've got to be able to, because I think a lot of that would throw a lot of people off. Yeah, um, it does. So, it was. Her yeah. included, even though she had been on Oprah before. She had actually been on Oprah before too, so she wasn't even inexperienced. But she, she was like, oh, my God, what do I do? She was also exhausted, you know? Yeah. yeah. For sure. And so what are some of the things there? Let's say we're doing a radio interview or if someone gets on local TV or even if it's having a phone conversation with a journalist and, you know, they're getting some, some information from us and then it kind of changes or it evolves into something we weren't preparing for. I mean, what can we do ourselves in that moment? Take a deep breath and ask yourself, what do I really want to say to my audience? What do I want? What do they need to know now? And how can I help? So you can often make a transition, even though it may be something that you're not prepared for, that you may be able to transition into material that you really want to get conveyed. And um, to, like I said, take that deep breath. And, <laughs> and look, studio owners are taking deep breaths during the day all the time. Yeah. So you, they know that's right. You know how to breathe. You know how to breathe and you know how to ground yourself because you're a dancer. You know how to pull yourself down to earth. That's what I would say to do. Like think through your feet, like all the way through to your feet. Because when we get scared, it all comes all the way up. Energy comes all the way up. So we want to bring it back down to stay calm. Think about you know, what you do before a performance in terms of breathing and solidifying yourself. So this is the same kind of process. And say and tell yourself you do know all the moves. This is just a variation. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, I want to ask about, you brought up before, you know, with online, things come up really, can come up really quickly yeah. and very viral and it can be good or it can be not so good. And the dance industry has seen some controversial um, stories come up over the last couple of years around, you know, television shows or uh, you know, what's happening inside. Yeah, I was curious as to what you meant by that because I wasn't sure when you said the, dan the dance industry has. Um, so, I mean, we've had different things. You know, there's TV shows on at the moment that have been great for dance. There are ones that have feel like they've tarnished our industry a little bit as well. The same with, with media. I think it's with any industry. There's bad things that happen. And so how can we, you know, because not let that affect our business or the stories that, uh, you know, that we want to put out there? How can we guess, I guess, put a positive light on some of the negativity that, that does happen? Yeah, I mean, an interesting... Um way to deal with that, I think, might be to go right at it. Like if there's, I don't know what you're talking about exactly what's happened in the dance industry, but take that negative and say how that, so not to have that happen to the mm -hmm. students. Yeah. So because negativity, remember, gets seven to 10 more play than positivity. So you want to start with the negative and then move to the positive. So what happened on the reality TV show or whatever, or this, you know, like maybe over criticizing or whatever, like being really mean, you know, you can talk about how harmful that is to be criticized that much and how positive reinforcement and dance and, and you know, helps. helps. Yeah. So, yeah, so you could even do something like that. So take that issue head on Mm. and show how you're um, going against that trend. Yeah, I love that. So, so acknowledging and then kind of putting, you know, uh, giving your advice, giving, you know, the way that you approach it in your studio, you as a dance studio. 
Yeah. So you, one of, you know, one of the most popular things is how to make sure this doesn't happen to you. Ooh. Or, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a great, how to make sure that this doesn't happen to you to you right. is like the fear thing that's very, very popular because we're wired to avoid that. So that's just the way neuroscientifically we are actually more wired to perk up to that kind of thing because yes. it's survival, right? Yes. So that's a natural to use for the me media, how to avoid that, the mistakes to avoid and how to make sure this doesn't turn out to be you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think it's great. Susan, to wrap up, I could talk to you for a very long time. Oh, but, me too. But to wrap up, what are some, what are some of your success tips? So you've worked with lots of clients who have had lots of media exposure. I'd love for you to share just a couple of the qualities that you believe they possess that has meant that they've been successful in, in their line of business. Yeah, so like what you did, uh, perseverance, I think, is number one, really. Mm -hmm. um, to really, the, my favorite clients are the ones who do the assignments right away and have results. I want people to have results. I love that. So when, when somebody does something and then that there are results, right? You know, so and it happens pretty immediately, which is really terrific. So I do, I, uh, so I love that. So I say, if you're going to do something, um, one of the things that they do is sometimes like, I know we get really distracted on social media is to choose one social media that you really love. Like if you love Instagram or you love YouTube, focus more on that one um, area um, because my successful clients have chosen like a path or something that they particularly want to do and really, and really stayed with it. But I think one of the biggest things that, like with Dr. Sarah Gottfried, who's um, specializes in um, the horn, she wrote the New York Times, two New York Times bestsellers now, the hormone, um, the hormone cure and the hormone reset diet. One of the things that we did is like totally systematically prepped her for her book launch or whatever your launch may be. I mean, it can, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a book or your your doesn't even have to be a launch is we really set everything up behind the scenes created a store for her in the back end of the kinds of things that her clients would want creating joint ventures with people who, mm. who I know she would want to connect with creating a teaching certification program um, that didn't happen before the launch that happened after but that was already starting to get set up you know what are the things that you give away on your website to build up you know, your popularity and just going through that really super systematically before you reach out to the media to make sure that you're prepared is one of the things that that launch, we worked nine months before she launched her book. Mm -hmm. Right. And before she started going after media and she started going after little bits of media in between, she got a piece and O magazine, you know, then later on. So there were little things along the way that she was doing cause she didn't want to wait, you know, mm -hmm. for the launch. But, but, all of that kind of setup, I think, is super important for your success and to be prepared for that success. Are you set up and ready with you know, the phones, with the, you know, your internet access, all of that, um, you know, to have all of that systematized? I love it. So it's really persistence, you know, have persistence, be prepared and create a plan. Yes, the three P's. That's Thank what you. I love. I've forgotten about my three P's too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. They, were, I, they say plan, prepare, and practice. I think there was a fourth P. What was the fourth one? Persistence. Yeah. Plan, prepare, practice. Those are the three P's. Plus persistence. Persistence Absolutely. Is, is the key. Uh, it I, is I, the key. I, hmm, I'm a big yeah. fan in that. It is. So thank you for, for reminding me of that. Yeah. All right, no problem. Um, look, it's been great talking to you, Susan. People are going to want more from you. They're going to go and check out that article with those guides. I think that is a great resource. You know, the editorial kind of calendar, um, give us your website again and where people can get more info about the work that you do. Yeah, it's prsecrets.com. And on the homepage, there's a free special report of the 50, um, top media contacts that everyone gets for free. So you can sign up for that pretty much on every page. I have a different offer and there's an offer on the special reports page. So you can pretty much get a lot of different things for free to help you prepare for media. I also have, um, master classes or free webinars on there so you can take those as well. One of the things I think your people might be interested in is, um, 
you know, getting into O Magazine. So that's one of, oh, Oprah, Mag, you know, it's Oprah's magazine. That's still one of the most powerful places on the planet for women. So um, not so much for men, but in men, if you have something that's of particular interest to women, but, you know, Oprah is, if you can talk about a different dance that helps you lose weight, you know I mean? Or that keeps you ageless, you know, those are some of the things that O Magazine is really interested in. And while it's very competitive, that's still, a, that would be a great place mm. for all of you, I think. Yeah, too. I think so too. Great national media to get. I think so. So that's a, anyway, so it's PRSecrets.com and there's also plenty of uh, articles that you could keep you reading for pretty much about years. <laughs> There is a lot. I've been on your website a few times, Aaron. There is a lot of fantastic content. Um, so you. definitely eat it up because what we talk about in, in Studio Success Formula and in our program is how important this part of your overall marketing strategy is. So it's definitely something something to look into. Thank you. This has been such a pleasure. You're such, um, you know, you, you make the conversation so easy. We could really talk forever. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, thank you. And everyone, make sure you go and check out uh, Susan's website and we'll see you again really soon. Thanks, Susan.